Hi there, Anshul here from Alpha Code. Welcome to our third lecture on domain driven design. And today we'll be talking about tactical design tools. So if you don't know what domain driven design or tactical design tools are, I think you will need to watch my previous videos for which I'll put the link in the description. Now, as you know, we are into our third lecture of domain driven design. We have already been through the introduction of domain driven design and we have already seen what are strategic design tools. Now let's see what these tactical design tools are. What are tactical design tools? So tactical design tools are concerned with implementation details. It generally takes care of components inside a bounded context. So if you don't remember what bounded context is, again, you'll have to go back and watch my previous videos. Now it has become a de facto standard from the time the book was released in 2004. So you might have heard or used things like services or entities, repositories or factories. All these terms have been made popular by domain driven design. And on the contrary to strategic design, tactical design is expected to change during the product development. Now again, I have this overwhelming figure of tactical design tools. Let's break it down a bit. First, let's see what are model driven design and services. So previously we talked about everything about domain driven design is about the domain or whatever business you are trying to assist with the software is called your domain. Domains had subdomains and then every subdomain had its own bounded context. So subdomain lives in problem space and we have bounded context for the same in solution space. Now every bounded context is represented using a domain model. As you remember, domain model is to a bounded context what classes are to objects. So it's nothing but the abstraction of the domain and not every aspect of domain can be part of the model. So it's the aspects that are chosen for implementation that constitute the model. And then you have your ubiquitous language for each bounded context. So for example, if this world is your domain, then countries are your bounded context and each country has its own ubiquitous language, right? And the map of the country will be your domain model. Now you'll see everyone who is talking about microservices will say, design your microservices around bounded contexts. That means in reality, each bounded context will have its own microservice. And that's why every bounded context is expressed with its own microservice. So all of these will be your services basically. So now we know a design which has been implemented using the domain models is called model driven design. So now let's see what layered architecture is all about. If you have done a little bit of development, you might have seen a layered architecture. So what is a layered architecture? So let's take an analogy of McDonald's. So in rush hours, McDonald's have very high traffic. Still, they are able to handle that much of traffic. How does this happen? So you have people who stand up on the counter and take your requests, right? So those people are your request handlers. What they do is that they take your requests and they pass it forward to next layer. Now, what this does is that it makes you feel important even though you are not. Now, these orders are passed to next people who are just controllers. What they do is that they pass on the orders to your chefs and then controllers will take care that each request is served well and everyone gets his order. Next is your business. So a business can be anything that you are assisting. So right now your cooks will be your business layer who are cooking things for you. And the next layer will be your persistence layer. So what is your persistence layer? It is the layer from which all of your raw material is coming through. So cooks are getting all the raw materials ready from somewhere. So that is your persistence layer. So this is basically a layered architecture. We have the same architecture in your softwares as well. So what are the advantages of a layered architecture? Well, you can accept requests faster and everything is organized and well-defined. It increases flexibility, maintainability. It makes your components reusable. Now that we are done in with these three things, let's go to what are value objects. 
So according to me, value objects are one of the best things about a good design. And domain-driven design emphasizes on value objects a little bit more than you might be used to. So let's see what are value objects. So what is a string? It's a general purpose value object designed to handle complexities of character arrays. So when you used to code in C, right, you had character arrays for everything you wanted, but string wraps up a character array and gives you so much business functionalities like renaming, replacing, index of, substring, deleting, iterating, so many business functionalities. You are so much used to it that you cannot imagine your life without a string and it will be very hard if you had to use character arrays for all of your functions that you do with string. So value objects reduces complexity and forces ubiquitous language. Value objects are nothing but some values that exist in your system and those values generally come from your ubiquitous language. You might be used to using float for money or you might be using strings for email or there are many value objects example like you can have registration numbers, you can have phone numbers, then you can have speed of things, colors, names, addresses, car models. I think you might be using primitives for all of these stuff, but that is completely wrong. You should be using value objects instead of primitives. In fact, some of the coding experts say that you should not have primitives used in your objects at all. So what are features of value objects? they don't care about uniqueness so it's like if you have a hundred dollar note you don't care about its uniqueness you know you don't want that particular note if someone exchanges that note from you as long as it's in good shape you don't care about the uniqueness and they are always immutable it would be horrible if you had a hundred dollar note and someone at night from somewhere else changed its value to fifty dollars right so that would be a horrible horrible thing if it is gone, you can just replace that node with the same value at it won't matter. And they are rich in domain logic and they are auto validating. What does that mean is that you will take care of all the validations and domain logic inside that value object. For example, in case of money, you will have all the rounding off that if it reaches 100 cents, it should be converted to a dollar and you cannot have negative money or is it in dollars, rupees, pounds or euros or whatever and they have strong equality. So you can always say that these two values are equal. And what do I mean by strong is that even if you have three, four items constituting a value, they should all be used in that equality. Because they are immutable, of course they are thread safe. So you should always use value objects in your design. It plants the seed of your domain inside your project.